Up next, Bessie, I don't know how to say your last name, I'm going to let you uh, introduce yourself. We have Bessie, uh, the Director of Performance Analytics at Kobo, the e-reader company. Hi, thank you, that's okay. Uh, so <laughs> it's Bovo Linnaeus. Bovo Linnaeus, thank it's you a, so much. It's a Greek last name and it's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> Very cool, yeah, I would, have, I would have butchered it 20 different ways, so thank you for that. <laughs> that's okay. Cool, so thank you for being here. Did, were you able to catch the keynote? Yes, I was. And see about Visible. Did you guys hear about Visible before? Or was that kind of new no, for you? No, that was new for me. Cool, did you guys see any ways uh, that you might, uh, did you get some gears turning from that? Um, I'm not sure just yet. I think okay. I want to get my hands on it and play with it a bit more and just sort of see what, what's out there and what it can do. Very cool. Yeah. So let's talk about Kobo a little bit. What, what type of data do you guys analyze uh, in the in the app, I could imagine a lot of stuff. Folks on e-readers these days highlighting things, paging, how long they're you know going through pages. What are what are some of the cool data you track uh, oh, about yeah. us when our, on our e-readers? So we have a lot of information. Actually, one of our problems is we have almost too much because we track you know every every minute read on every device oh across all our customers. So it's it's a lot of data, and it's it's been our first challenge has been really just wrangling it all in and then right. starting to figure out what's in there and what we can do with it. But uh, we've been using Tableau for all kinds of information. So even our, our customer care group uses it to track call volumes and customer satisfaction. Oh, very cool. <laughs> to, yeah, to um, what I mostly deal with is how many customers we have, how many books they're buying, um, which countries they're in, that sort of thing. We have another team that focuses specifically on what they're reading, so the different okay. genres um, and country differences, again, between you know, what the genre preferences are. And then um, our device team, since we also make the e-readers as well as sell the e-books. Very, very cool. Yeah. And what are some of the insights that you've gotten from using Tableau over the years? You're, and another question, how long has your big data journey been? Did you start collecting it from the very beginning? Um, I haven't been there since the very beginning, so okay. I'm not sure, but we've been using Tableau since 2013. Okay. And our company was founded in 2009, so right. pretty pretty early on, considering there wasn't a whole lot at the very beginning, but um, right now we have data pretty much going back to 2010, um, and that's, that's sort of what we've been looking at. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And so what are some of the, like I said, the insights uh, that you've gotten from, from using Tableau? Oh, right. So. Uh, one of the great things about how vi how visual everything is in Tableau is it makes it really, really easy to spot the differences in each of the countries, yep. especially with seasonality. So um, in North American countries, you can imagine Christmas is a big time. Right. Um, Mother's Day is also a big time because women tend to be big readers. So um, people are sort of last minute shopping for their mom and aren't sure what to it's get. They're like, oh, I'm going to get an e-reader. <laughs> so that, that tends to be a big, a big time for us as well. Um, and that's easy to spot. And then, of course, in other countries, that's not true. So a lot of European countries, they take a lot of time off in the summer and go on vacation. So then we see spikes around the summer. And that's all really easy to visualize with the you know, sort of time-trended graphs in each country. Got it. And what okay. does your overall big data picture look like? You mentioned you've only been using Tableau uh, for the last year and a half, two mm -hmm. years, and the company was founded in 2009. What, like, uh, do, you, do you know where your data comes from? Is it all over the place, and you've got to kind of pull it in on the fly, or do you have a data lake? Or um, We're actually, we have a really smart big data team. Fantastic. And so they do a lot of <laughs> Keep that. Them. Yes, yes. <laughs> Those are rare. <laughs> they do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, so I'm cool. pretty lucky that a lot of it gets um, centralized before I even nice. go looking for it. And so they're, they're huge and they're instrumental in, in making our jobs a lot easier. Got yeah. it. And what's some of the like bigger surprises that you've gotten? You mentioned you know normal things like yeah. tracking. Some of that we'd probably be able to like forecast. You know, just a smart person would probably be able to say, yeah, we'd expect to see that data go up. But what were you know a lot of folks talk about? Um, you know, like Roz was just saying some of the things she didn't expect to see, like cheese. I don't know. I don't know if you heard Roz. No, I, I didn't uh, her, catch it. her uh, cheese uh, say, or, uh, purchases were way higher than she expected oh, when funny. she looked at the data. Okay. Do you guys do you have any stories of stuff like that? Big surprises that came out of. Uh, um, yeah. So there's. There's sort of things that you sort of take take for granted in our business that yep. we just sort of know, so especially once Fifty Shades of Grey came out and that was so <laughs> huge. And it, it basically seemed like that was the only type of book we sold. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so you know, when you look at genre preference, it's like it's, it's fiction and then romance and then uh, what we like to call active romance. Yeah. <laughs> so those are kind of the, the Very big... Very tactful. Yes, so those are the big <laughs> genres. And one of the beautiful things about e-reading is that on an e-reader, people can't tell immediately what book you're reading. 
okay. then that coupled with Fifty Shades became sort of, that's what we sold. <laughs> right. So you just kind of got to expect like, okay, you know, I, I kind of started here thinking we were just uh, literature and, you know, like, all these smart things that people were reading, but then they sort of just mostly read romance. And that was, that was fine, but um, one of the surprising things that we found was that the countries that don't, that don't strictly buy or don't buy that the most, and um, so two countries are sort of outliers in that, and the one is um, the Netherlands, and they love the thrillers. They love thrillers? They love thrillers. Okay. And Brazil, who loves nonfiction. Interesting, okay. Yes, and nonfiction was the most surprising because if you look at every other country, it doesn't even make top five, usually. <laughs> really? And for them, it's number one. So wow. those Brazilians, they, they love their nonfiction. They love their nonfiction, <laughs> very cool. And so what, did that help, um, like, drive decisions about, did you start reaching out to more publishers of nonfiction in Brazil then and saying, you know, hey, folks would really like to get your stuff, or? Yeah, well, it definitely helps. I mean, we look at, um, we also look at um, recommending books, so we, okay. we can see that already and see, you know, you like nonfiction, we'll recommend more nonfiction and that sort of thing, and also how we merchandise our web store. Got it. Yeah. And I'd imagine you guys have a share on social media as well, right? Yes. And that, does that, do you, do you use Tableau for that as well to track that sort of data? Uh, we're, we're starting to. So okay. social media is kind of, it's kind of floated around between different departments, so no one's really... Um, Taking ownership. Yeah, yet. no Got one's it. really come to us and said, you know, we really want to start tracking that. But I know there is there's rumblings of that and that we want to start looking at that more in depth. So yeah, that's that's definitely somewhere we might go next. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. And um, so what are, you, what are you looking to do here at the conference? What, what uh, kind of things do you have lined up? Uh, well, actually, I'm speaking at the conference as well. As I'm very one cool. of the customer speakers. So I'm speaking tomorrow at 2.45, if anyone wants to come and <laughs> Excellent. What's the learn. Talk? So I'm, I'm presenting a report that I co-created on what-if scenarios. So it's okay. basically just one huge calculator, and you can put in different parameter values. And so like, if you increase customers by this much, or if you decrease churn by that much, how does that all affect your business and your forecast for the next year? Wow, great. Yeah. And this is something that you've created custom yourself and you're yes. sharing with folks? Yes. Yeah. Very cool. What's the name of that product? It's just called What If? Uh, well, we call it the budget uh, simulator. Okay. And uh, in the in the title of my talk, I'd call it what if scenarios the on steroids. <laughs> very, very nice. Cool. So, um, what are you most looking forward to in the entire conference besides your talk? I'm sure you're looking forward to that. I, I am looking uh, forward to that. Or with Tableau. Um, you well, probably I've, you probably know a little bit about what's what they're planning to do and some other stuff. So well, from the from the keynote, one of the things that I I can't even believe didn't get a standing ovation was the global formatting because it's one of those things that's yeah. just it's so tedious and you have to go to every sheet and everything and try and find it. And I, I was so excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, we're, <laughs> we're, st we're oh, standing, crap. right? And, and it was it was hardly even. I don't think it even got the most applause of the of the features that are coming out. But I was really excited about that. Um, but in terms of the sessions here, I'm really looking forward to Neil deGrasse Tyson. And uh, on the schedule, I'm actually the last person speaking before him. Oh, really? So I like to think of it as I'm opening for him. <laughs> Perfect. That's a good way, to, good way to put it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Me and Neil, we're like, we're like this. <laughs> <laughs> so I should, I should have let off this question, but what, what kind of stuff do you do on a day-to-day -day basis, and how does Tableau figure into that? Like, uh, did, could you describe your day? What, if somebody was looking to become a performance analytics uh, person, <laughs> What would they What would they be doing on their average um, day? Well, that's actually changed, and, and Tableau has helped us change that. So, fantastic. A couple years ago, my day to day might have looked like, um, you know, I have a plan of things that I want to do, and then I don't get to them because, you know, this person from marketing comes to me and asks me a question, <laughs> and that person comes right. to me and asks me, and the questions would tend to be really basic. So they would be like, well, how many how many sales were there in this country, or how many customers do we have here? And they were just so sure. basic and so repetitive. And it was kind of a waste of our team. And, of, and like, there's no analysis, right? It's just, here's a number, here's a number. And so one of the huge things with Tableau was that we were able to just create dashboards that had those numbers in them. And they, they didn't have to ask us anymore. They could just go and get those numbers. And then that allowed us to do um, deeper dives into our data on, the, you know, on our own, as right. well as the people who were asking us those questions before. Now, they didn't need to ask those questions. They already knew them. So right. then they started asking us smarter questions, Very right? Cool. So it was, it, was really, it was really a big time saver, and, and it was really a huge deal for us. And now we have 
more people than ever with Tableau licenses and and uh, we're actually almost at our limit all the time and so I'm always trying to go through and see if um, anyone's not using their license <laughs> and they're not they're actually they're all using it so it's it's, it's good and bad because then I have to go buy more licenses but <laughs> <laughs> but I'd rather they actually be using them so that's great sounds like a big enabler yeah. so what are like some of the and, and again if anything's proprietary just tell me you can't talk about okay. that what are some of the, like dashboards that you guys have do you guys have like day-to-day -day sort of metrics you look at and and provide through Tableau. And I'm, I'm guessing yep. you use Tableau Server as yes. well as desktop? Cool. Yep, that's right. Um, like I said at the beginning, so we you know, have everything from calls, tracking calls and customer satisfaction. Um, within our team, we look at, um, we have sort of a telco-based model for how we look at our business. So yep. we have an idea of not just how many customers we've ever had, but all, how many of them are actually active purchasers. Right. Um, so we have, I think I mentioned churn before, so we look at this idea of customers churning out, which is sort of a, a made up metric that we have because we don't, you know, it's not a subscription based model like like with a telco. People just stop buying or yeah, stop reading. Yeah, people just stop yeah. buying. So that was one of the, the earliest analyses that we did was to say, you know, what, what kind of looks like that good cutoff point to say, okay, after this point, they're probably not coming back. And right. that's how we, you know, that's how we define churn. And then we measure that and we forecast it and we have a budget, so we have a target that we're aiming for. And then this has really helped us see um, how we did in the previous month, how we're forecasting to do this month and forecasting to do in future months. Cool. Yeah. And do you have any like stories of how much like Tableau in one situation saved you a bunch of money or a, a crazy amount of time or do you have any good stories? Um, I don't think I can give you like a dollar amount, but okay. uh, <laughs> but like I said, it just it was such a huge, huge time saver for answering all those basic, basic questions, sure. and uh, I think I think it also sort of relieved the people who were asking the questions didn't want to be asking us the same questions every month either. Sure. So I think they, you know, they would a lot of people would come to me with a sort of sheepish look on their face, and like <laughs> I'm sorry to be yeah, doing this like, again. I'm sorry. <laughs> So now they don't they don't do that anymore. So they can you can have a you know a good relationship again, and they can come to me and ask questions and not feel bad about asking the questions they're asking. Very cool. Yeah. And what are some of the um, like the the visualizations that you use inside? What are some of the like graphs that you like, or some of the? Uh, uh, um, I'm sort of just a line graph purist. I don't okay. know. I <laughs> feel like that's the one I probably use the most. Um, I do like overlaying a lot of um, um, extra data. So if I can you know, have a specific color coding that makes right. things stand out, and adds information, or even just labels to say, you know, percentage share that something is in, in addition to the, the raw number. I like to sort of add as much as I can into one. And the uh, one of the new things that's coming up, and that looked really exciting, was the viz within a viz. That's exactly where I was yeah, thinking, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was, I was clapping for that cool. one. Cool, <laughs> that'll probably take, a, take, take uh, the place of a lot of your uh, overlays. Yeah, yeah, that's very exciting. Cool, cool. Yeah. And so, uh, the, the total team that you have working on visualizations right now is give a uh, well on, on my team, it's me and my analyst. Oh, okay, so it's just <laughs> who is also of you. here. But we have sort of a spread out group of analysts. So there's another mm, probably I think there's probably about ten of us in total who are producing reports. Cool. And then almost a hundred of us consuming consumption them. side. Yeah. Very, very cool. And if somebody wanted to get started down your career path, what would you suggest they do right now? Kid out of college or kid going into college, uh, what, what should they start well, uh, looking at doing? Well, so my path was I, I have a math and computer science degree. Okay. I hear now there's way that you can get actual degrees in data analytics and data science. So totally. that's, I'm a little jealous of that. I mean, I wish I, <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was around back when I was in we school. We all kind of OJT'd it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know that's that's the path that I would recommend. Yeah. Cool. And what would you what would you guys see in the future for Kobo? What would you guys like to be uh, to be doing? Just big general question in the oh, future. Big general question. Um, I think more of the same sort of spirit that we we had starting up when we were a startup. Mm -hmm. So we had this sort of David and Goliath. Who cares that we're David and everyone else's Goliath yeah. attitude? And we were just you know we were there for the for the reader, and we've always been a company of um, building a product for readers by readers. So I think that's sort of the, and it was a fun place to work. So and it still is. So I think we've we've kind of gotten back to that spirit of, you know, we're a fun place to work. We're by readers for readers, and and that sort of spirit of just really looking out for the for the customer first. 
Cool. What are some of the things that you guys do to make it fun? That seems to be like even more than money and even more than like perks of you know free sodas and stuff. Just <laughs> a, a lot of technologists and big data folks that you're talking about yeah. want a fun place to work. Yeah. How, how can companies get that? How, how do they inspire that kind of culture? Um, one of the things that I, I kind of realized recently that I, I take for granted is um, we have an open concept and someone was mentioning a, a cube sitting in a cubicle. I was like, cubicles, right, <laughs> that's a thing that some no. people sit in <laughs> right. and block themselves off from their... So it's kind of newsroom style yeah, offices. Yeah, yeah, it's very large and it's very open and I think we get a lot of great collaboration and, and sort of, you know, you can overhear your, your coworkers speaking about things and you never know where ideas can come up and that might be relevant to you even though you, you didn't really think they might be. So that, that's one thing that's, that's really nice about um, our layout. Uh, we also have you know, happy hour once a month where we all sort of get together and party and cool. another department will put on a, a, a themed sort of party, like a like an outdoor barbecue or sometimes it's country themed. So we right. had a, a Japan themed where we had big sumo <laughs> suits and stuff. So it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Sounds like a blast. Sounds yeah. like a fun place to work. Yeah, it is. And could you tell us again uh, what your uh, talk was? I think it was 2.45 tomorrow, right before Daniel deGrasse Tyson. Uh, talk and what was the topic again? It is what if uh, scenarios on okay. steroids. <laughs> Sounds good. And do you, do you know the session room number for our viewers? One, two, three. One, two, three. Super yeah, easy, easy to remember, to remember. folks. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for taking right. the time out Thank with you. us Thanks and talking so talk to us about Kobo. Bye. Take care.